Hi everybody, my name is Tyler, and this video is going to cover the basics of acetaminophen, also known as paracetamol worldwide. Here's its chemical structure for those of you who are interested. This video is gonna cover the very basics of acetaminophen. Not gonna go into too much detail, but it'll give you a good idea of what acetaminophen is and how it's used in the body. The naming for acetaminophen comes from the name N-acetylparaaminophenol. That's a mouthful, so it can be shortened into acetaminophen in the United States, or more commonly known worldwide as paracetamol. Also, it has a trademarked name of Tylenol. Its uses include antipyretic uh, uses, which means to decrease a fever, and also as analgesic use, which is to take away pain. Now, its uses are mainly for headaches, which are mild to moderate, body aches, uh, dysmenorrhea, um, and also to decrease fevers as well. One thing of note is it has no anti-inflammatory effects. It's an antipyretic and an analgesic, but it is not an NSAID or an anti-inflammatory. It can be used alone as acetaminophen, or it could be combined with opioids for more severe pain relief, like Percocet, which is going to combine oxycodone and paracetamol, or Lortab, which is hydrocodone and paracetamol. Now, it has multiple different forms in the form of pills, capsules, liquid drops, suppositories, probably many more that I didn't name. However, for the most, um, for, for the most sake, it does have a pretty predictable onset of 10 to 30 minutes. It does have a half-life, which ranges from one to four hours, meaning it takes the body about one to four hours to get rid of half of the dose that is currently within the body. It really depends on the metabolism of the individual. There are many different adverse side effects that you can see due to acetaminophen. Hepatotoxicity is one of them, meaning hepato for the liver and toxic, so it's going to be toxic to the liver. It's usually exacerbated by alcohol consumption or pre-existing liver disease. In those two situations, you don't want to combine alcohol with acetaminophen or you don't want to take acetaminophen if you have pre-existing liver disease. It also has GI side effects such as bleeding, um, you may also see skin reactions, such as Stevens-Johnson syndrome. Um, you may also see toxic epidermal necrosis. If you Google pictures of those, they're pretty severe skin reactions that can occur after taking acetaminophen. And then you can also get kidney damage, such as renal tubular necrosis. So it's not a completely um, benign drug. There are potential side effects for taking acetaminophen. Can you take it during pregnancy? The generic answer is gonna be yes. It's considered a class B agent, which usually is considered safe. Um, class A is absolutely safe. Class B is presumed to be safe. Class C, we're venturing into the realm of unknown. Class D, we recommend uh, stay away from it. Mechanism of action, uh, the way that acetaminophen works, its analgesic properties, meaning to take away pain, we really don't have a really good explanation. So I'm not gonna venture out into the theories of why uh, acetaminophen or Tylenol is gonna work. However, its antipyretic properties, it's thought to act upon the hypothalamus, which is going to be your heat regulation center within the brain. It's thought to reset that heat point at which the body thinks its temperature should be, and by decreasing the set point, it'll help get rid of the fever. Now, what do you do in an overdose of Tylenol? You're gonna administer N-acetylcysteine in some situations. Also, you may need to give a liver transplant depending on the severity of the liver damage. The whole goal of giving the N-acetylcysteine is to prevent liver damage, so you don't need a liver transplant. There's also the metabolism and toxicity that I want to cover. 
The liver primarily metabolizes uh, acetaminophen via glucuronidation, sulfation, and anhydroxylation. These are the main pathways the body utilizes and metabolizes the drug. Now, it's toxic because it has an intermediate of the metabolism, NAPQI, which stands for a long um, term that I'm not going to get into, but this NAPQI molecule is going to be an intermediate of this process. So it's going to go from drug in its drug pill form, it's going to go through a series of reactions, different steps, different intermediates. One of those is going to be NAPQI, which happens to be uh, toxic and damages the kid, uh, damages the liver, and then it'll get further metabolized and eventually excreted from the body. So NAPQI is one of those just kind of intermediates that arises due to the metabolism in the liver, and the NAPQI can thus damage the liver. To get rid of it, simple, you pee it out. Here are my references. If you have any questions, comments, if you enjoyed the video, please be sure to let me know. Otherwise, I can be uh, contacted via my YouTube website or if you have any future video recommendations. Thank you very much.